Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. I get loads of emails with companies reaching out wanting to send us something to check out. Sometimes it's stuff like they want to send us a unique USB charging cable or some random bit of tech that just isn't something that I would bother with like a dock or some type of phone accessory thing. Sometimes though, it's something really interesting though and that's where this keyboard comes in. The Vissels or Vislay, I actually don't know how to pronounce it, the V84. It's a 75% deck with hot swap switches, Bluetooth, and an included wrist rest. So let's check this thing out. Let's start off by what you get in the box. You get the keyboard itself, two magnetic feet for adjusting the angle, a switch puller, a keycap puller, the wrist rest and anti-slip feet for that wrist rest, as well as additional keycaps if you're going to be using this thing on a Mac. And it actually ships with the Mac keycaps installed and I swapped them because I use Linux most of the time, so Windows keycaps work better. The overall design and construction is really solid. The keyboard itself weighs around 814 grams, give or take one or two grams here or there. The scale is all over the place sometimes, and I did measure this, and this is without the feet being attached to the keyboard. It's 130 millimeters wide, 318 millimeters long, and around 40 millimeters high when the feet are fully attached and extended. Overall, it's a pretty standard 75% deck. The keyboard feels very dense when you pick it up though. As I mentioned, the weight is 814 grams, give or take. So yeah, it is quite a heavy keyboard. The casing itself is plastic, but the top plate appears to be metal from what I can tell. And the V84 has some serious weight to it. Like I've already said, there's also zero deck flex. The included cable is a USB type A to type C cable and can be used to either charge the V84 or to use it as a wide keyboard. The USB type C port is side aligned and is on the right hand side of the keyboard if you're looking down at it straight from the top or on the left if you're looking at it from the back. There's also these adjustable feet but not in the traditional way like I mentioned. They're magnetic and they actually attach to the underside of the deck. There's also a power switch on the underside of the deck as well that allows you to turn the keyboard on or off for Bluetooth operation. If you want to use it in wired mode while the USB cable is being plugged in, you switch it off and then on, obviously, if you want to use it for Bluetooth. The V84 has per key RGB lighting and all of the lighting can be controlled in their own software. The software is relatively easy to use and allows for macro controls and just about anything else you'd ever need to customize anything on your keyboard. The keycaps on the V84 are PBT and the font on each key is good. They also use the SP Cherry profile if you're wanting to swap out the keycaps for any other type of keycaps. These keycaps in particular feel quite good to type on, however, they can be a little bit slippery. I noticed that I would mistype things on this keyboard quite a bit as well. That's probably more to do with the fact that I'm used to a completely different keyboard. I also found that when I did get used to this keyboard, my typing speed on the V84 was way faster than usual. So there's a little bit of a bonus. The form factor of this keyboard is nice too, and I didn't find myself missing the numpad as much as I thought it would. And the inclusion of the function key row makes this a much more attractive keyboard for me personally. The V84 uses VS switches. They're a linear switch with a total travel distance of around four millimeters with an operating force of 45G. Now, if I'm being honest, they're a pretty good feeling switch. And as much as I'd hate to admit it, I actually quite like the switches on this keyboard. They are very nice and very smooth to use. They feel like they're a bit of a mix between cherry reds and speed silvers, but here's how they sound. It's got a few other tricks up its sleeve too, and one that I've already mentioned, the key switches are all hot swappable, which means 
you've got a lot of switch options. The V84 is compatible with almost all MX style three pin and five pin mechanical switches. That means you can use Kale, Otomu, Gateron or Cherry switches. And I think for those who are into custom decks and don't want to spend lots of money getting started, this could be a pretty viable option. Not only that, the sockets all have per key lighting in them too. So if you use clear switches, you're good to go with RGB. You can also use Bluetooth to pair it wirelessly and it'll allow you to pair the keyboard to multiple devices as well. This is a pretty standard thing these days. And I like the addition of the Bluetooth on this keyboard as well, which is actually the reason why I wanted to look at it. Actually, I used this keyboard with Bluetooth the whole time that I used it and I'd usually have issues with Bluetooth, but surprisingly with the V84, I had no issues with it. The thing that really makes the V84 stand out to me though is the feel of these switches. Once you get used to them, they're just really nice to use and it's been a while since I've felt something noticeably different to anything else in that regard. So good work to Vissels or Vissle, I don't know how to pronounce it. Good, good work to them for using these switches. I wanna talk about my experience using this type of keyboard for my purposes, because some of you guys might look for the same things in keyboards that I do. Now I'm not a custom keyboard guy, but this is just from a regular consumer who likes using nice keyboards. From a content creation standpoint, which is my primary use case, the V84 is okay. The numpad is something that I personally use all of the time, but again, for this type of keyboard, you're just not buying it for that. You already know what you're getting yourself into if you're buying a 75% keyboard. For gaming, this keyboard is excellent. Now, the only issue I had was I kept hitting the tilde key instead of hitting the number one key. And again, I suspect that's more to do with me not being used to the form factor, but it's not really a deal breaker once you get used to it. So what don't I like about the V84? Uh, okay, well, actually, it's, it's pretty rare that I don't have something bad to say about a keyboard. There's actually nothing I can think of that would make me not recommend this keyboard. I just really like it. The thing is, I've been using this keyboard for a couple of weeks to really make sure that there wasn't something that I had to point out that I didn't like, but it's just simply good. Even the fact that it comes with an included wrist rest is something that you wouldn't expect on a keyboard like this. It's almost like they looked at what people complained about with other keyboards and said, hey, we're not gonna be doing that at all. We're gonna make this keyboard decently priced as well. But I'll come back to that. For the keyboard enthusiasts though, this is probably not the keyboard for you considering there are some things that actually could possibly annoy you. There's potential for some keycap interference if you're using custom keycaps with this. Most keyboard enthusiasts know about all this stuff, so they'll do their due diligence on this stuff. So it's probably not gonna be an issue anyways, but I just thought it was worth mentioning. Even still, if you're a custom keyboard enthusiast, the V84 might be a cheap way to tinker. That said, I, I guess we should get to the part of the video where I talk about the price. The Vissels V84 at the time of filming this video is going for 99 US dollars. Yep, you heard that right, 99 US dollars. The amount of value you're getting for 99 US dollars is very, very hard to beat. Now, I did something that I wouldn't usually do. I asked our keyboard enthusiasts in our Discord, and even they were really surprised about the feature set of this keyboard for the price. Now, these guys are the most hardcore keyboard folk you would ever meet. Uh, when they speak, sometimes it's like an alien language to me most of the time. So yeah, even they said that this was pretty good value for what it is. It's really hard for me to admit this, but this keyboard is properly good. This is probably one of the best, if not the best and most affordable off the shelf pre-built keyboard that allows you to hot swap and to tinker in existence, full stop. As I mentioned earlier though, I don't know if there's a reason not to buy this keyboard, honestly. I can already see the comments from people who would have bought this keyboard after seeing this video and coming back to this video and saying the exact same thing that I'm saying in this video. I cannot overstate how much value is in this keyboard. If you need a keyboard and you're looking for a 75% keyboard that has hot swappable switches with RGB, the Vizzles V84 is definitely the keyboard to get. And I'm pretty sure this keyboard right here 
is gonna be replacing my main gaming keyboard. I actually like it that much. This thing is properly good value. But let us know what you think in the comments. Let us know if you've got one of these. Let us know if you've been looking at this keyboard. I'm keen to hear your thoughts. Yeah, this is just such good value for what it is. 99 US dollars and an included wrist rest. You got me at the included wrist rest. It's pretty hard to find that in keyboards in this price bracket. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you hated this video and realize that I don't know anything about keyboards, you can hit that dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And yeah, as I mentioned, this, this is definitely going to be my new gaming keyboard. I like it. It's really, really good. 99 bucks, hot swappable switches, RGB, and even the included switches. I better turn it off before I do this because it's actually connected to the computer behind me, but like, it just sounds good. It's, it's a good keyboard. It's really hard for me to, you know, confidently say that something is properly good, but this is what it looks like when a company listens and when companies realize that custom keyboards don't need to be so expensive. This is what you get. Thanks for watching.